it's another episode in the series about the series. The one with the 200 TDI in it and the dodgy brakes. Anyway, enjoy the video. This is the pressure differential switch. You shouldn't really need to have this, but this basically sits in between the master cylinder and the front and the back axles. And the idea is if the pressure drops on one of these circuits, bear in mind you've got front axle, back axle, whatever, uh, then there's a shuttle in here that should move in one direction or another, earth sat against that pin, like a light on the dashboard. Is there as a fail safe? Um, alas, the shuttle is seized solid in there cannot get it out. So I have to use a bit of, let's put a bit of release penetrant in there, see if we can get to do something. And we can, uh, we can have that out. I'll let that soak while I'm, I'm spoiling the kettle up. Oh yes, kettle's just spoiled. How about that? Good timing, huh? As I mentioned to you earlier on, there's a shuttle inside this device uh, that's supposed to be balanced, sits right in the middle, and there's a pin on the end there which will sit in the groove. Yep. So basically, unless the pressure in the brakes changes in one direction or the other, the shuttle will stay dead still. Normally, there's no ring. That's what I thought these grooves were here for. There's no ring on each end to keep each chamber completely separate from the other and this area in the middle should be bone dry. Shaft is held in with E-clips, C-clips, circlips, whatever you want to call them and then on the end in here there's a bloody grip to go ring which is actually held in place by the end plug. The plug goes in thus, holds the o-ring in place and there's no ring in the body about here that I use my very 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 best Chineseium and this thing is as bendy as fuck I make this this Chineseium um, screwdriver I was able to fashion a hook and get it in behind so basically that's in the groove now so the groove is just inside there and the only way of getting into it was to hook it tight like that Bastard. So I'll replace these two O-rings um, and I shall push him back together again. And I think that will be good for further service. Um, I want to have a quick, there's been no steel wall near it. The shuttle itself is, it's got some very light corrosion on it, but it goes in and out quite happily. So it's not really a huge issue. Um, I also think that where the O-rings are sitting, which is kind of like one sits about there, and one sits about there. We should be okay. We'll see. We'll see. If I'm finding it's not going to hold the pressure, because once it's sat in place, you see, it doesn't move. It's not like it's running against those ovaries all the time. Yeah, that was loose. That's no good. So we'll go with these two, because at least then. They're, they're roughly the same on the outside diameter, give or take a quarter of a millimetre. Well, I think when the shaft is on the inside, they'll fit beautifully. Now, getting this thing back in here again is going to be a struggle, isn't it? Let's drop it in the hole. Let's get a screwdriver. Oh! It really kind of needs to go up and into that groove. It's going to be one of those non-serviceable things, isn't it? In which case I've just completely wasted the last 15 minutes trying to get this thing apart. Maybe 20 minutes. Might have been longer. It was an excessively tight bastard. It really was. It was not amusing me. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, it's almost there. So all I'm doing is tucking the o-ring into the groove. What I might do, I've got a little pipe cleaner. 
pipe cleaner in there first of all, just check there's nothing untoward inside the groove. It's just dirty brake cleaner, dirty brake fluid. There's no debris in there. Oh, I can actually see the groove from there with the light like that. Right, it's in the old. And then what I need to do is manoeuvre it so that it goes into that groove. Nice. Looking like it is. I think it might be in. I'm running the uh, barrel of the screwdriver around the o-ring. It's feeling like it's in. What does this go in? I think is the next proof. Because if this goes in, then it probably is. That's gone in. Ha! It's gone in. Right. Silly ass. So that has gone in. Is it going to slide backwards and forwards? Yes. And yes. It's tight, but it's, it's working. Brake pressure is quite. It's quite a bit higher than me pushing with a blunt edge of a screwdriver. Now, I've done that edge. Let's put the C clips back in. There's one, and that goes all the way in. Where's that black drift gone? There he is. He goes all the way in, and then I can see the other one. how I had to get the C-clips out through this hole. It was not fun. It was a bit of a bastard of a job getting these C-clips out. It's coming in. It's coming in. Come on, get in there you bastard. That feels like it satisfyingly went in there, doesn't it? And it did. Now, does the piston move? Yes, it does. Back and forth quite happily. New o ring on this end, pushing it over the shaft for now. And then that chappy there it looks like it's got a big o ring around back end of it as well, up here, it has, there we are, another o-ring. Um, what are we going to use there? Might be a little bit fat that one, a bit big. I use a copper washer. I might use a copper washer. Probably would be better and more suited to it, really, wouldn't it? Brakes on this bloody Land Rover. Right, we're struggling further. New cylinders have gone on. It's the passenger side drum. Um, 
And basically, I've re really, <laughs> not a little bit, I am really struggling um, with the adjusters on this. This one here, I'll change one of them. One of them was set like that, which you can't push through the back plates. It's got two washers at the bottom of it. I'm really not sure. And the other one I've set how it should be. And I'm just about to test that with the installation of the shoes. Thank goodness it's not all attached to the car. Now the instructions didn't come with the last set that I bought, but you can just download them. Google the part number and instructions. And it takes you to the download site. And you can just download the instructions and have to put these things on. So they've used the right cam. They've missed the big fat spacer and they put extra washers in, whoever done it. Um, I'm going to try this one first of all, and then I'm going to go back to that one and attack that one, because I've just noticed that while I was putting them together, they were just the, the adjusters were just completely different in the way they were all set up. I've identified which back plate was which, so that's fairly straightforward, and then I've identified which um, Cylinder is which because we've got twin leading shoe arrangement on these. Oops, that's just four now. And basically, you need to have the same cylinders on each back plate and the orientate. So, how do you tell which back plate's which? Um, <laughs> well, you can look at the manual and you can check the part numbers and so forth. I mean, what can be confusing is understanding what right hand and left hand is, or RH and F LH is in the manual. So, for instance, <coughs> whenever I look at the manual, let's find a picture with the wheel cylinders on it. Let the picture with the wheel cylinders gone. Oh, Richard, you're so beautifully organised for this one. You really are. Oh, this is outstanding. Right, here we go. So, basically, you've got wheel cylinder and you've got left hand. So right hand, left hand. Now the Land Rover manual, as I'm led to believe, current if I'm wrong, um, is right hand, left hand um, is depending on where you're looking when you're facing the back of the vehicle. So from looking at the back of the vehicle, right hand would be on the UK driver's side and left hand would be on the UK passenger side, is my understanding. And that kind of matches up with what I've got here. So what I've effectively got here now, because uh, I put the right hand cylinders onto this back plate, this is the right hand back plate. And I've also confirmed this uh, by looking at the positions of the bolts and so forth, the nuts, the holes, and all the other gubbins that go around this. So this is the driver's side back plate, complete with the shoes uh, and the cylinders. Now the other way of checking this out, because you've got a twin leading shoe arrangement, I typically kind of say that that cylinder needs to be pointed towards the front of the car. I'm where the front of the car is, okay? The back is that way. That's the back of the car. This is the front of the car. So the top cylinder needs to point towards the front of the car, okay? You get a leading top shoe, leading bottom shoe, okay? That's the first thing. So basically, as the wheel rotates, it's going to grab the leading edge of the drum, is the way I understand this. Um, Again, correct me if I'm wrong here, folks, but I don't think I am on this. I think this is right. Now, the next thing you need to work out, and we'll look at the back plate here, is the orientation. Which way up does the back plate go? Because obviously you've got two cylinders. Um, one will be at the top, one will be at the bottom. Now, very helpfully, Land Rover provides a little bit of a ramp here, and also on the inner oil catcher, there's an inner oil catcher thing, there's, there's holes in here, in order to allow you to catch oil and dribble it out the back of the back plate rather than the front. We'll put this on the right way around, Richard Shaw. Um, in order to facilitate that, there's a hole on the back plate. So you've got your six mounting holes and you've got a little oil drain hole. That goes at the bottom. There you go. So you've sussed your orientation out now. And on the stub axle, you've got the ramp. That needs to coordinate with the hole. And then this goes on the front. Right, so we won't worry about any of that shit now. Now the next thing I've been battling with, because obviously I took loads of photographs when I took this thing apart, is how the brake pipes root. So bearing in mind, this is the front driver's side, that's the front of the car, that's the back of the car. The pipe, correctly, as I'm led to believe, and as I understand, roots from around here, okay? And that goes off towards the flexi. <coughs> The issue I had 
bad. And the bit that was really causing me to scratch my fucking head here was that the bleed nipple was in that hole. Now, it's bad enough bleeding one of these systems when the bleed nipple's not at the top of the back plate. It's even worse when you can't actually get a hose onto the bleed nipple because the bottom swivel pin is like that against the bleed nipple. So whoever did it, did it wrong, the original part. We know they did everything fucking wrong on the brake pipes the first time round. So my understanding is that, and this is kind of, again, where I had to quadruple check, is that the bleed nipple faces towards the front of the car on the downward slope on the slave cylinder. And then you get access to actually get a hose onto that. And the hose does root round, forwards round the drum. Um, it's not ideal. Um, the wheel does kind of cover this area, so it is kind of protected. But basically the pipe needs to run from that terminal at the top, runs around here, as close to kind of avoiding a justice and so forth, but it needs to also avoid the swivel housing, which goes like this. Uh, and you get a little bit of clearance, clearance uh, because you've got that in there as well. Um, but then ultimately your brake lines do need to run fairly close to this lip around here, but not over the top of the lip. Now when it gets down here, this is the tricky bit. So previous owner, not the guy that owns it currently, previous owner who put all these brake lines on, decided to run it from there and into there. Now I suspect they did that because access is really tight for the bend on this particular union here. Um, and you have to put a really, really, really tight bend uh, right on the other side of the union. And I suspect that is probably why the ham-fisted gibbon, sorry, that's out there, did that. So what I'm going to do now is I'll probably time-lapse it, uh, but I'm going to make up the brake line that goes around here. Um, uh, I'll probably start with this end first because this is the end I'm likely to pull. So I'm just going to need a trial fit to make sure it does actually clear the bottom swivel pin um, and the steering arm. And then obviously run it around here and it, going into the top union is fairly straightforward. So that's easy enough. Um, and then obviously I need to make a little uh, stub of the pipe here that goes up towards the flexi. Because rather than the flexi going directly onto the cylinders as it does with the earlier cars, uh, the flexi is mounted onto the back plate onto the top of the swivel housing. Let's go and have a quick look. Boing, 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 boing. So here is a bare swivel housing. Flexi comes down, goes onto a bracket, and then there's a thread on the back there. I've just got a little cap on it at the moment. And a pipe needs to come around here and go onto the back of the back plate. Okay, and then the pipe runs forwards around the swivel ball. And there's the bottom swivel pin you can see there. Quite tight. And you want the swivel, you want the kind of bleed nipple to be pointing down in that direction. Okay, and then you basically got your slave cylinders are at 12 o'clock or as close to 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock as you possibly can. Again, it's not ideal having the bleed nipple at the bottom, but it does work. Um, I think it just makes bleeding the brakes a bit of a bastard. Uh, I've seen other folk where they uh, orientate it so you end up with a very long pipe that goes from here down to the bottom cylinder and another pipe that comes up to the top and then the bleed nipples on the top. Um, to my mind that's just too much pipe work at risk um, and well I'll go factory on this to be honest but yeah I mean comments are welcome below on how you series three chaps and you twin leading shoe brakes chappies have uh, have got around this particular situation let me just put the table back into the back so you know how you've got around this situation um now i've also got some longer bolts here um, so these bolts here are to adjust the shoes so the shoes don't kind of go point in or point out you want that to be leveled parallel those two needs to be parallel um, so i just lob some because they're, they're five sixteenths thread these uh, and the only bolts that I had had these long shanks on them. Which meant that I couldn't wind them in far enough. I certainly couldn't put a locking nut on there. So they're only temporary. I have ordered some fully threaded 5 sixteenths. I think they're called set screws, but they can be bolts. Fully threaded bolts. Um, uh, and, and some nuts as well. Because I needed some nuts, apparently. I'm not going to say it again, folks. I'm not going to say it again. And then to secure the cylinders onto the back plate, because the passenger side didn't 
have them secured. I only have one knot on each. I just put a pair of nylocks on each. These are all UNF fixings on these. Um, so a couple of nylocks on there, um, and that will do the job. Um, right, I'm going to make up some great lines now. Let me crack on with that, and I can put the music on. Right, somewhat amusingly, the swivel's back off again. And the reason the swivel's back off again is because when I pushed the drive shaft in, um, it was not seating far enough in such that it would uh, it would allow the stub axle to go on. Now, this may well have then answered my question as to why this inner race of bearing, and I have got the, the rolls that came out of it, why this inner race was in a state of disassembly when I originally took this thing apart. I suspect some more gibbonry, I'm afraid. So this bearing, I'm just going to pop the rollers back into it after getting a good wipe over because most of them landed on the floor just shortly after I disconnected the swivel housing from. <coughs> and they're just big rollers. And I believe all it really does is supports the um, drive shaft as it goes through the swivel and into the hub. And it's supposed to support it on that there. Now, I'll go through that in a second. What I wanted to do first of all was to do a dry fit on the bench. And we'll see. So I've got the stub axle here. I've got the coffee. Oops, Now it could well be that this bearing is fucked, in which case I'll open another one. But it looked all right when I pulled it all apart. The noise in the background is the blower, by the way, on account of the fact it is rather cold, somewhat cold. Somewhat cold ish. Right, so we'll get the uh, thing upright. We'll push the drive shaft through. And onto the bearing. Now that goes in. Okay, so it's onto the bit. So basically, there's a sleeve on the drive shaft, and I've got that down the middle of the bearing. So now that's in. Does the stub axle now fit? Yes. Well, I'm inclined to actually assemble it on the bench here because I can only think that by my ham-fisted gibbonry and maybe slight wear in the bearing on the back end here, let's just uh, turn it around so you can see the bearing here. Now once that sleeve has gone through the bearing then there's not going to be a problem. The rollers won't, will not drop out and there's no play in that bearing at all. So I'm inclined to, because roller bearings they're, they're very very hard wearing roller bearings like this. I'm inclined to build this thing up on the bench and then fit it just to make my life a tinsy bit easier. Right, so now I want the brachius pacoplatius. Mmm. Oh, that's a nice coffee. Needed the bloody coffee today, I tell you. Now I suspect because one of the rollers was not in the cage when I took it all apart, which I thought, oh, that's odd. And now I know why. Because whoever did this last time and replaced everything with silicon probably just decided to bash it and get it located. Is that still, that's not quite. We're not quite in there yet. Why is it not going in? So I can see it's putting strain on that bearing race. So the next thing I need to do well, I've got thousands of gaskets, I'm not too bothered about those. Just take this back out again. So the next thing, looking at this sleeve which runs around on the top of the bearings, it's got like a bloody great big chew mark on it. It's probably where 
the bearing has got trapped at some point. Let's look at the other one. It might be that that bit is what's causing me the aggravation. And the other one's even worse. <laughs> yeah, I think a gibbon's been involved here. Fucking look at it. It's a bloody great big angle grinder cut right the way through the shaft there when they tried to cut that race off. Some right old fucking gibbon's been working on this. Okay. What are we going to do? You can see where the roller's been running on that race. It's been, been running towards the outside edge. There's a big dent there. I think I'm inclined to replace this race and that sleeve. I've got the part numbers for them. So the sleeve is 244151 and the race is 244150. <clears throat> and then we've got this other part which is a big sleeve. Oh bollocks! One step forwards, two back. Let me just see if I can get that up right. Otherwise, in which case I'll do something else. <laughs> because this job's actually starting to get on my tits. Now when things start getting on your tits and you're in danger of Yeah, but see that's gone right in now. That's gone right in. And now the stub axle is going to fit. So this side, we might get away with. That's definitely on there now. Now there is a seal, or, or, which I've replaced on the inside of here, which should go onto the shaft. So let's pull him out a little bit. Pull him out a lot. Um, right, the shaft has gone on. Yeah, I think we It's a funny old business, really. Now, there's the slot. There's the slot. So that's the orientation. Let's get the brake back, please. Then bolt it up, see what happens. I think the other one I've got bigger issues with. So break back plate, clean hands. Goes on. Um, yeah, I've already done the high lamar. Always have handy blocks of wood around the workshop. They're always useful. My bring this. Take the back break back plate off for a second. Lift this whole thing up and position it on the wood. Like that. Now I've got enough height, you see, to fiddle around and get the stab axle. Probably need some more high lamar on that because I think that's probably that's gone off. Clean that face up. Silicon, blue hylamar. You don't need silicon. On this, you need a gasket assist. Then I got a brand spanking new quality paper gasket, which goes on. We've got the bolts, which are here. Got the washers, we've got the back plate, which goes on. 
and lines up roughly with the holes. So there's the drain hole. There's the stomach. So we've got the oil, whatever it is that exists. And first the bolts. So I've got a bolt in to locate it, hold it all roughly in place. And then I'll be a bit more organised with my thread lock. Spring wash. Right way through and into the hub. It snows, I reckon it'll warm up. Right, so that was going to come out again in a second. Just check on general alignments and seating. It's all looking fucking beautiful. And now we'll go for a bit of, there's the rain, or the hail. I've cleaned all these bolts. All of these things are absolutely rammed out with uh, silicon shite. I know it's um, got a spring washer, but there's no harm in having, adding a little thread lock. I'm not talking these up here because I like talking up nice and evenly. Then I can fit this whole drive shaft assembly I need to replace the gasket on the back there because that's been done up tight. Put this whole shaft, back plate, everything straight in. It might be easier doing this with that. It's a bit weightier, but I think once it's in, and it's up against the, uh, the end of the axle tube, I think it can be easy enough. Right, I'll show you when it goes in. All fitted on. No problems at all doing it that way around. Uh, I might do the other side that way around. Now, down here, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's go behind. Can we see? Let's go get a light. Oh, for fuck's sake. Right, we've got a light down. Um, and under here, you see the bleed nipple? It's tight as it is. You imagine it in the other position where the pipe is. We well, just wouldn't get anything onto it. It just... It becomes almost impossible to access. Um, so I think I've done it the right way around. I'm pretty sure of it anyway. Um...